Hello YouTube. Today I am here to show you all how to put in Yaki Pony Twin hair. And it has a curl pattern. I had one bag and a half left from the last time I installed. And I couldn't remember how many bags it took, so I went and bought three more, which I only needed to buy one more. Um, currently, as you see, that would be one and a half bags. One full bag and half of another. So, as you can see, what I have left which this piece actually goes here, but I'm just moving it out the way so you guys can see. I have that left to do. And I, I'm going to insert a picture of my braids. I kind of forgot to do that before I got started, but I can tell you have about 15 braids going back from the front and if you notice I gathered them together right here right there and it's important because these little pieces that come down you want to put those you want to make sure you put hair on those as well on those little pieces because that helps cover this long part so again these little pieces right here after you gather them together and you braid straight, I took the braid over. I didn't, this is one braid by itself going all the way across. I didn't join them into this one. I joined them into the other ones that are going across. All this is just going across. These are the only ones that are going straight back. And there's very few, it's just 15 of them. But I took the hairs that once I gather them, braid them together, then I will go over that first braid and braid it into the second braid. So I didn't want the knot to be right on the very top of my head, the thicker part. Okay, and I will show you the install in a moment. I wanted to get as much as I could done beforehand, but I wanted to make sure I came back in so you guys can, or come in, I'm sorry come in so you guys can see some of the installation before I even get up here because this is where I'm going to have my part if you notice these two are the smallest compared to the rest of these so they will be the closest and this is where the part will be right in between here so I will be back to show you how I install this People think you cannot cut this. As you can see, my hair is cut. All you have to do, or all that I do, is I snip that piece. I put my fingers in between. Nip that piece. I, I didn't do anything special. I just cut it. And since I don't want both pieces right now, I just take this, put it in a circle, and lay it down somewhere out of the way. These, this, this half actually, sorry, not these. You just take it, make sure you are taking little bitty pieces. I want you to see how little that is that I'm installing. 
And then some may be even smaller, especially when I get to the part, the part that will be where my part will be. Those pieces will probably be even smaller. So one more time. This is the hair. Just take little bitty pieces. Don't worry about the end that's straight because it'll form its own curl. Because that's this type of hair. So I will be back to show you how I install. And I will be cutting this. So I'm going to go ahead and turn around and let you see how it looks right now before it gets cut. This is what it looks like beforehand. And let me turn this way. So stay tuned to the end so you can see how I cut it and what the style will be. Okay, I am back. As you see, all I have left is the area where my part will be. This will be the part right here. These are the ones that I braided closer than the rest. And I wanted to point out, let's see, I'm looking in my mirror. Okay, you see where the two are joined right here? You see how that goes probably about a half inch or an inch maybe? Where I was telling you guys you have to, those are important where it meets up. That is so important. That part is what's going to help hide all of this right here. As you notice through here, you don't see all that. That comes from those little pieces I was talking about. You don't see all that. So, and I like how I'm getting volume. I love volume. So I'm definitely getting volume. And I can't wait to start razoring because I'm going to razor when I said cut I'm razoring it so and when you I'm going to show you how I put it in and when you put it in please 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 and I'm going to say please 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 again <laughs> make sure that you tie it definitely tight Okay, now I'm on this part right here, the straight part, where it's just one. Go under. Okay, you take your piece. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't even, I'm a bad tutorialist. Tutorialist. <laughs> take your piece, wrap it around your hand. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to do it on a, uh, another strand because that was just really bad. That was real bad. I cannot be a teacher. I cannot be a teacher doing it like that. I'm going to try again. Okay, so you get a piece of hair. And as you can see, you can see how thin that is. Have your crochet hook. Now, you see I have that turned upside down. Go up under the braid. Turn it around. Put the hair on to the loop. Or hook, I'm sorry. Close it. Pull under your hair. Grab it. So now you have. Uh oh, I'm trying to I'm twist it. Now you have your loop with your two pieces, your two ends. Now I try to generally make sure that they are the same length. So I pull on the hair to their even. See how it's even now? Then you want to grab the hair, pull it through the loop, turn. Pull it through the loop and press down. Here's the most important part. Pull a little bit from one side. Pull a little bit from the other side. I grab from the back. Tie it. And pull tight. 
If you do not pull that part tight, you will find yourself waving your fingers through your hair and some strands are going to start coming loose. And as you can already see, just with us doing those couple pieces, you, it is already covering up that little spot of the braid that was right there that I told you those little, little one inch parts will start covering up that. And you can put several pieces right there, it depends on how full you want that area to be. So I'm going to do it again. Pull it tight because a couple of them where I was getting a little lazy that I didn't pull tight then was the same ones that came right back out I was in the kitchen <laughs> so you don't want to be out somewhere in the public and some hair is falling out so it's very important to pull it tight you see how like this hair just feathers so easily so it may be more tempting to keep putting your hands in your hair. So you definitely want to make sure that you pull that tight. So for now I'm going to put this clamp here just so I can be able to see the hair and my braid. So I'm just going to do a couple more. Now that I have gotten that one straight part, now we're going into the double braids. This braid right here, the hair will go this way. And this braid right here, the hair will go this way. Make sure that your pieces are small and very close together. You want this part to look really, really, really neat. So this is the part that people will see. I'm not someone that's trying to hide and make it seem like it's my hair. I just want it to be presentable. So I really don't care about knots being seen. I don't care about that part. I just care about a, a good look when you do look at it. A good, clean, crisp look. So I will be back when I get real close to the front.
Okay, I am back. I'm sorry I was listening to Destiny Godly. <laughs> but I am back and I am almost done. I told you I would be back when I get to the front, very front. As you can see, I have them really, really close together in that part area. And see what I was talking about right in there? Now you can't even see that part. So it looks so much fuller now. And I still have these two to go. And if I want, I will put some there. I'm not sure if I am. I try not to go all the way to the edges because I want my edges. Save the edges, ladies. <laughs> You know, if you can, if you got a style that can cover those edges, don't go all the way to the edges. Because that hairstyle is usually temporary. Your edges are permanent unless you break them out. So I'm going to do a few more of these on camera. Now that I'm even closer to the front where you can see. And you see that? That's what I'm talking about. If you don't pull tight, they'll start coming loose. And as you can see, that's the one that's close to my edge. I was a little leery about pulling tight, so it's in there now. But that's how you know that it's loose. It'll start getting a, get a loop like that. Okay. So now, and as you get closer, you can make them smaller and smaller, your pieces. That's your choice. And don't forget the small piece of hair. Turn your, your hook upside down. Go under the braid, turn the hook around, place the hair on the hook, close it, pull it through, hold the loop, take the hook out of the loop, here's your loop, here's your loop. Here's your two pieces, and I want them to be as even as possible. So all I did was just move the pieces where they'll be even, as you can see. And you want to take the hair under the loop. And you see I have not turn, turn once, and take the hair through the loop one more time. Pull and push down. And then grab some hair from one side, grab a couple of thin strands from the other side, and tie it. That's what you want to tie tight. That's that side. So now what I'm going to do over here. Because I didn't let you guys see any that I did on this side. Which is the same method, nothing different. Exact same thing. They do anything different. I think the biggest difference is just that you're, you know, you're on a different side and the way you hold your hand. And I've seen the tie up under that piece. I don't know if you guys can tell how I held it. And sorry guys about the phone. So sorry. It's too late to. So now I'm going to get a couple smaller pieces just to go through here. And then, actually, okay, I've got one piece left. I really don't want to have to open up another pile. Okay. No, I'm going to do. Like and it's all in my face and yeah, I'll be prepared for that. 
And I'm not going to go any closer, so I'm not going to open another pack for anything. I'm going to use these last. I had one piece, but I made it into two. Just because uh, so close to the edges like that. So, what I'm going to do is just put these last two thin pieces in and call it a night. Uh, I'm not going to add anything else to it. And since it's so thin, I just took, tightened it and then took half of it. And I'm just going to tie it because it's so thin. Kind of hard to get a little from one side and the other side. Let's see, this one more piece. Maybe I can get it to go over there once more. Okay, for the very last piece, I'm going to bring it. Uh, you know what? That is the last piece. I'm not going to put any more because I love my edges. Actually, sorry. We're going to. Since it's still so close to the front of my hair, I'm gonna put this one right there. Pull that through. Pull it through. Pull it through. And then take a little bit from one side, pull it from the other. Hi. Okay. We're done. <laughs> At least for the installation part. We are done. And as you all know, once your hair grows, it, this will get looser, the scalp will get closer because it's growing, and you won't even, eventually you won't even see that. But that's the most that you see. So I'm going to come back in a minute. I gotta get ready to cut it, and I will be back. Okay, I am back, and all I did was took. A brush like this and lightly raked over the top to flatten it up a little bit or flatten it down I said flatten it up no I'm gonna flatten it down and I'm doing that because I'm going to prepare for the cut so first things first I am going to turn around and bring my chair with me Okay. I'm using these kind of scissors because I'm not going to use real good hair scissors like beautician hair scissors. I'm just going to take the center of my neck. Feeling for where my actual make line is at. And I just want to go a little past it so when my head is up and then when it bends down, I still don't have to worry about my make line. And I'm going to angle downward to cut. Of course, have a little mirror with you so you can see. And all the rest of this. And I'm not wanting it like a straight, I mean, I'm cutting it like a blunt cut, but I'm not. That's why I angle it down. Keep 
that going up is because I wanted the front to be a little bit longer and that to be short to come up and meet with that. And we're just going to do the same exact thing for over here. It just depends on how you're holding your scissors. I'm going to go downward this way. So, just because I am right handed. Bob look. And now you can go ahead and pull it back up. Take it out of that flat state. And get it to where the feather back up for you. I'm having a little time trying to see because of course I'm still backwards so I don't know what my front look like. So I'm going to turn around. That was the back. And now two feather the front and pull that up because I love my volume and you can always go back in there and add more pieces if you want more volume. I just don't want that on my neck. That was my biggest thing and it wasn't that cute. <laughs> so, but I have natural long hair. Those that's been following me and watched any of my previous videos or noticed my hair before I do something, you can tell that I've always stated that I don't like hair on my neck, but I'm not willing to cut my hair off. As you get older, sometimes hair doesn't uh, want to grow back. So, and I do love my long hair, but it's harder to make it whole curls, and it just doesn't work with doesn't work with me the way I want it to. So. So you guys got to see the cut and how I did it with three, three. Straight across and two this way. And I will be back with the final results. Okay, I am back. And this is how I look. Any questions, leave them. Leave your comments below. And I will get back with you as soon as I can. But I really like it. Thumbs up if you like it. And this is the back again. And this is this side. You know we be feeling ourselves, ladies, when our hair is done. Don't play. <laughs> Bye.